The Centauro II is a wheeled tank destroyer built by the Consortium Iveco Otomelara. It will be delivered to the Italian Army, or Esercito Italiano, with the name B2 Centauro. It is the evolution of the B1 Centauro, which was the first purposely built tank hunter 8x8 armored car in the world, armed with a 105mm NATO ammunition compliant cannon. Welcome to a new Tank Encyclopedia voiced article. We would like to thank all of our patrons for their support for our project. And this time around, we would like to especially thank Sasuri for his generous donations. The Centauro II wheeled tank destroyer represents the natural evolution of the B1 Centauro. The B1 Centauro was designed to fulfill the needs of the Italian army during the late Cold War years. Its main aim was that of providing greater mobility to the Italian armed forces deployed in the defense of the national territory, for hunting down Warsaw Pact tanks that would break through the NATO defense lines in a hypothetical conflict, for penetrating an enemy rearguard, for anti-parachute patrols, and for amphibious landings off the Adriatic coast. For these requirements, the Italian army needed different characteristics from those of the tanks used by Italy in that period, such as the M47 and M60A3 Patton and Leopard 1A2. Mobility, heavy armament and a light weight were to be the strengths of this new vehicle. The CIO, against all expectations, devised a wheeled vehicle rather than a light tank, which it presented to the Italian army in 1986. Soon after, it entered into service in the Italian army. Even at the time of writing, in 2020, the Centauro is employed by the Italian cavalry regiments, although in reduced numbers, and in the armed forces of Spain, Oman, and Jordan. With the collapse of the Soviet Union and the end of the Cold War, the B-1 no longer served the purpose for which it had originally been designed. The Centauro has since taken part in peacekeeping operations and humanitarian operations with NATO and the European Union, taking the vehicle from the severe Balkan winters to the hot climate of Somalia and the Sultanate of Oman. The design of a prototype for an upgrade of the B-1 Centauro began in 2000, with the new Hitfact 1 turret and Otomelara 120-44 cannon, the same as on the C-1 Ariete. It was presented at IDX 2003 and at Eurosatry in 2005, but was not very successful with only 9 vehicles bought. In December 2011, CIO signed a contract with the Italian army and began the development of a vehicle that would replace the B1 Centauro. Also wheeled, but with a completely modified structure, more anti-improvised explosive device or mine protection, and a 120mm cannon to optimize the army's ammunition logistics line. After four years of very careful planning, aimed at providing excellent protection for the crew, in 2015, the B2 Centauro was born. The prototype was tested intensively. It was subjected to 20 anti-mine and anti-IED tests, which determined its excellent resistance to explosions. The turret and the hull were also extensively tested, with excellent results, against infantry weapons and light cannons. With a weight of 30 tons when battle-ready, the B2 Centauro does not weigh much more than the armor-upgraded B1 Centauro, which comes in at 27 tons, in contrast to the 24 tons of the original, non-upgraded B1. The B2 Centauro has been designed for the modern doctrine of network-centric warfare, to serve in operations other than war, and for urban warfare, where a wheeled platform is far more functional than others in terms of mobility and firepower. It was designed as an improved substitute for the B1, but many lessons were also taken from the experience gained with the Freccia VBM, an Italian wheeled IFV variant of the B1 Centauro with which it shares some electronic systems. In the future, the new versions of the Freccia E1 II will incorporate experience gained from the design of the Centauro II. The Centauro II is the result of a close collaboration between industry and defense. It is a new generation armored vehicle, able to operate in every possible scenario, including traditional missions in defense of national security, 
humanitarian interventions to help populations following natural disasters, infantry support operations, and peacekeeping missions. In short, any operation in which the armed forces that employ these vehicles are called to intervene. The hull is divided into three parts. The front part with the engine compartment, one fuel tank and the gearbox, the crew compartment in the middle with the turret on top, and the compartment for ammunition and main fuel tanks at the rear, separated from the rest of the hull by a bulkhead with a door. This system offers greater safety for the crew, as the three compartments are separated and sealed from each other. At the front of a vehicle there is a sturdy trapezoidal travel lock, two headlights, the driver's hatch equipped with a periscope, one camera with IR visors, rear view mirrors and a cable cutter. The crew has three hatches, two on the turret, one for the tank commander and the other for the gunner, and one on the left side of the hull for the driver. Additionally, in an emergency, all crew members can evacuate the vehicle through an armored door located at the back of the hull. Its structure and its technological systems are able to operate even at external temperatures from minus 30 to plus 55 degrees Celsius, thanks to the air conditioning system integrated in the modern air filtering system. The turret has a hatch for the commander with eight periscopes, of which two can rotate, and another hatch for the loader with five periscopes. The glass on the periscopes is made of a special anti-splintering material. At the back of the turret is the ammunition compartment, and outside there is a rack where ammunition for the secondary weapon or the crew's equipment can be placed. The upgrade CIO installed on the Centauro II begin with the new HitFact II turret built by Leonardo Finmeccanica. HitFact stands for Highly Integrated Technology Firing Against Combat Tanks. It weighs 8,780 kilograms, in contrast to the 7,800 kilograms of the B1, is equipped with the latest generation of optoelectronics for the commander and the gunner, including the two-axis stabilized panoramic binocular periscope model Attila D, independent from the turret rotation, allowing the commander to control the battlefield without having to rotate the turret. It is also equipped with an Erika full-format infrared camera, able to spot targets at 10 kilometers during day or night in all weather conditions. The B2 also mounts the Land Optronic Thermal Aiming Resource, or Lothar SD aiming site, with tilde B IR camera already in use on the VBM Freccia. However, on the Centauro 2, this is the updated digital version and can therefore share images with other vehicles or command centers. In the event of system failure, the gunner has an optical sight with 10 times magnification. Another noteworthy upgrade is the independent stabilization on free axis of the gun. This means that, even if the vehicle is moving on rough terrain, the gunner will have on his screen a clear and steady image of the target and can then shoot with good precision. For external communication, a series of communication systems with HF, VHF, UHF, UHF-LB and SAT and the Sistema di Comando, Controllo e Navigazione, or Command, Control and Navigation System, known as SICONA, are available. These upgrades ensure maximum interoperability with other armored or infantry units, and availability on information on the terrain, the environment, the climate, and the operating theater in which the Centauro II operates. In total there are six antennas on the back of the turret, one of which is an anemometer to measure wind speeds, another one a GPS transmitter, two are jammers, while the last two are used for communication. The Centauro II is equipped with a high-pressure gun of the latest generation. It can handle a firing pressure of 8,200 bars. For comparison, the 120mm Rheinmetall L44 cannon of the Leopard 2A5 DK can handle a 7,100 bar firing pressure, the Canone Otomelara 120-44 can handle 7,070 bars, the cannon of the Russian T-90 MBT can reach 7,000 bars, and that of the M1A2 SEP cannon can handle 7,100 bars. The Otomelara 120-45 low recoilless fitting, which is derived from the Otomelara 120-44 of the C1 Ariete, 
which in turn is derived from the Rheinmetall 120mm L44, gives the vehicle a firepower equal to that of the most modern battle tanks, such as the M1A2 Sepp Abrams, Leopard 2A6, Leclerc, Makava Mark IV, K2 Black Panther or Challenger 2. The gun is compatible with the latest generation NATO standard ammunition, such as armor-piercing, fin-stabilized, discarding saber, tracer, M829 ammunition with tungsten tip for heavily armored targets, the anti-tank APFSDS model DM-53A1, multi-purpose anti-tank M830A1 against less armored, unarmored targets or helicopters, high explosive obstacle reduction tactical or M908 against buildings or roadblocks, M1028 canister against personnel or buildings, and high explosive type DM11 anti-personnel ammunition. In addition to these types of ammunition, the cannon can shoot ammunitions developed by Leonardo and can also shoot penetrators with enhanced lateral effect, smart target activated fire and forget ammunition, and anti-tank guided missiles line of sight beam riding missile, which several NATO states are evaluating. The cannon has hydroelectric elevation that ranges from minus 7 to plus 16 degrees. In order to achieve the high level of ballistic performance, the large caliber cannon is produced with the most modern and lightest materials available. Even given the wide range of equipment on board, the Centauro II turret has a low weight, which increases the maximum speed of the vehicle and its mobility. The cannon, like its predecessor, is equipped with a paper box muzzle brake, which allows a reduction of the recoil and a semi-automatic electric revolver loader, which makes the loader superfluous. Thanks to the automation, the ammunition compartment at the back of the turret, which contains two six-round drums, can autonomously load the cannon when the type of ammunition is chosen by pushing it through a guide inside the breech and throwing the case cartridge into a basket. On top of the turret is installed a smaller, remote-operated weapon system turret, the highly integrated turret remotely operated light electrical, or hit roll model L2R, or light. It weighs 125, 150 or 145 kilograms depending on the installed armament, which can be an MG3 or MG4259 7.62mm machine gun with a thousand rounds, a Browning M2HB 12.7mm machine gun with 400 rounds, or an automatic Sacco Mark 19 40mm grenade launcher with 70 rounds. For this latest generation remote turret, detection and monitoring actions and remote fire control are performed by a modular detection system that includes a high performance TV camera, infrared camera for night vision, and laser rangefinder. The fire control system is assisted by a computer fire control with ballistic and kinematic calculations and an automatic tracker based on digital signal processing technology. The system is equipped with gyroscopic stabilizer and, in case of malfunction, can be operated manually. It is not clear if the Italian army has purchased their Centauro IIs with hit roll turrets or if like with its predecessor, it will have the classic pintle-mounted MG4259 for the tank commander and loader. The stowable ammunition adds up to a total of 31 rounds. 12 are placed in two cylinders, like those of a revolver, inside a separated compartment at the rear of the turret that, in the event of an explosion, would not damage the crew compartment. Another 19 are placed in the hull, in two cylinders of 10 and 9 rounds on the sides. The ammunition for the coaxial armament, which can be an MG4259 machine gun, or the Rheinmetall version, the MG3, or a Browning M2HB machine gun, varies between 1250 rounds of 7.62mm ammunition to 750 rounds of 12.7mm ammunition. In addition, there is another set of ammunition for the weapon mounted on the hit roll mod L2R turret consisting of another 1,000 rounds of 7.62mm, 400 of 12.7mm, or 70 of 40mm ammunition, as well as an extra 16 80mm smoke grenades. As with the B1, at the request of the buyer, the vehicle can be armed with the less powerful but still capable Otomelara Canone da 10552 LRF, which fires all standard NATO ammunition. 
This solution carries 43 105mm rounds. In order to increase the protection of the crew, a JAMA Guardian H3 system, four small round noise amplifiers, two frontal and two lateral, are used to disturb wireless communications and thus inhibit the remote activation of radio-controlled improvised explosive devices. Other passive defenses consist of eight 80mm Galax 13 smoke projectors positioned in two groups of four on the sides of the turret. Also, several RALM sensors, laser alarm receivers designed by Marconi, are able to identify laser emissions, such as those used for rangefinding from enemy vehicles in a 360 degree radius. These can determine the type of threat and automatically trigger the grenade launchers to create a smoke screen that is able to hide the vehicle from infrared radiation as well. An acoustic signal is also sent to the onboard intercom system and the source of the light beam is sent on the display so that the crew can react quickly to the threat. In addition to the four JAMA Guardian H3, there are two more antennas. One is a stylus, classic type, and the second one is a cylindrical one, used to disturb the enemy's communications. In the event of the detonation of a mine or an enemy cannon shot that blows up a wheel, the vehicle, if not severely damaged, can continue to run and move away from the combat zone. Furthermore, the tires are designed with a run-flat system, allowing the vehicle to move even if all eight wheels are perforated, though obviously reducing the maximum speed. There are also numerous mechanisms, including fuel leak monitors, fire and explosion-proof systems. In the case of the later system, the automatic fire suppression system produced by the Italian company Martec uses FM200 gas, which, despite having several negatives, can extinguish a fire in 200 milliseconds, less than a blink of an eye, has the possibility of self-diagnosis and battery disconnection to preserve its duration. In addition, the system cannot be deactivated when the vehicle has the engine running, preventing any risk of tampering. The gas is injected into the compartments, which can then be removed by simple ventilation. There are a total of six 4-litre tanks in the engine, in the crew and in the rear compartments. The chemical, biological, radiological and nuclear system was developed by Aero Secur and features two filters. A Brucker device was also installed for the detection of chemical pollutants and radiation outside the vehicle. CIO has developed three levels of protection for this vehicle. In the basic prototype version, the defense is type A, which allows the alloy armor to withstand armor-piercing rounds from 30mm guns on the front, 25mm on the sides, and 12.7mm on the back. With additional composite armor plates on the hull and with the replacing of other spall liner plates in the turret, the Centauro II increases its weight by 1.5 tons but reaches Type B protection and becomes completely protected from 40mm APFSDS rounds. Inside the vehicle the plates are covered with Kevlar, which, together with the spall liner plates, considerably reduces the number of splinters produced by a shell that pierces the armor. In the future, with the experience gained from the VBM Freccia and from the B2 Centauro vehicles tested, the consortium will develop Type C defenses and perhaps also Type D with an active protection system designed also for the C1 Ariete MBT. In addition, several Italian industries are studying new explosive reactive armor with which to equip the vehicle to offer increased protection against even large caliber heat shells and missiles used by modern tanks. Otto Melara, for one, is trying to design something similar to the British Romor A armor, already successfully used by the B1 Centauro in Somalia as part of the European Union training mission in Somalia. This armor has allowed the vehicle to withstand fire from the Soviet RPG-7 and RPG-29 rocket launchers. It can also reduce the effect of the 125mm heat SF ammunition used by most of the former Warsaw Pact tanks, which are its potential opponents, by a claimed 95%. The bottom of its hull is shaped like a V, with a double steel plate to better deflect mine or IED explosions. All the mechanical parts on the bottom of the hull are arranged so as not to cause damage to the crew in case of an explosion. Like the turret, the bottom is equipped with high-efficiency ballistic armor. For the crew, the innovation consists in having explosion-proof seats, so in the rare case that an IED or a mine severely damages the vehicle, the crew members would have a higher chance of surviving. 
The ammunition racks in the hull and in the turret have been designed so that, in the event of an explosion, this will not damage the rest of the equipment or the crew, as on the M1 Abrams. Its dedicated anti-explosion systems, explosion-proof doors and pre-carved panels allow the explosive energy to discharge to the outside of the vehicle, further increasing the safety of the crew. The engine of the vehicle is a diesel 8V Iveco FPT Vector, giving 720 horsepower, supercharged by two tubo chargers, feeding bi-fuel, diesel or kerosene at a 20-liter displacement. It is equipped with a system common rail electronic injection system, which is more than 60% more powerful than the mechanical injection pump of the B1. At full tank capacity, the Centauro II has an autonomy of 800 km and a top speed of 110 km per hour on road. Its engine is more powerful than the Iveco MTCA V6 of the B1 by over 240 horsepower, though still having the same top speed. The new engine weighs 975 kilograms and has a power to weight ratio of 24 horsepower per ton. Originally designed as an engine for buses and bulldozer, this engine meets the European laws of emission level 3. The B2 has four fuel tanks, one located near the engine, two next to the rack in the hull, and the fourth one located under the ammunition racks. The transmission is the automatic ZE Ecomat 7HP ZF902 with seven forward gears and one reverse, produced under license by Fiat. The exhaust, mounted on the right side, has been designed to decrease the infrared radiation footprint by mixing the exhaust gases with cold air. The Centauro II can overcome slopes of up to 60%, run alongside slopes of 30%, for depths of up to 1.5 meters without preparation, and overcome obstacles up to 0.6 meters high and trenches 2 meters wide. Of the four wheels on each side, the first two and the fourth are used for steering. The last set of wheels turns in the other direction, giving a turning radius of just 9 meters. The eight suspension units are McPherson models, equipped with ample travers, and allow better off-road driving and more accurate aiming of the cannon on the move, combining the good dynamic behavior of the vehicle with the comfort of the crew. The tires are of the R20-1400 type, which, thanks to the CTIS system, can be calibrated with four different inflations from standard pressure to an emergency pressure in case of minimal grip on the ground. It is also possible to mount model 41580 R685 tires, as in the German Boxer MRAV, that increase the ground clearance from 40 to 45 centimeters. The crew size ranges from three to four members, a driver, a commander, a gunner, and a loader. In the future, when the electrical loading system will be fully automated, the crew size will drop to free at the expense of the loader. The lack of a loader will free up space that can be occupied by additional 120mm ammunition or, hypothetically, another net-centric warfare system. A noteworthy improvement is the decision to adopt a system that allows the vehicle to drive with only indirect vision through the seven cameras, of which four have infrared radiation vision installed externally. The displays for the crew are made by Larimart SPA, with battle management system. The tank commander has two screens available, one with the management system and the other with the fire control system, and has a joystick. The gunner has a clutch and the loader has a PlayStation type joypad for the control of the Hitrol Mod Al2R. The driver also has a screen with the vehicle management system on which the status of the tank is highlighted, along with the lithium battery charge, the firefighting system, the entire observation system, and centralized system for controlling the inflation pressure of the pneumatics. This vehicle has many names that create a lot of confusion. In some articles in specialized magazines that talked about it before its appearance at Eurosatry, it was called the B2 Centauro. CIO has given it the factory and export designation of Centauro II MGS 120-105. The numbers indicate the calibers of the cannons that can be mounted on this vehicle. The Italian army that is, for now, the only expected buyer of the vehicle calls it Centauro II or B2 Centauro. In the future, when it enters service, its name will become B2 Centauro. The new wheeled tank destroyer was unveiled on 13th June 2016 at Eurosatry 
and was officially presented to the Italian army on 19th October of that same year at the Cecignola military complex. The Centauro II project has so far cost the Italian army $592 million due to its cutting-edge systems and applied technologies, such as the brand new armor and electronic systems materials. The Italian government, on 24th July 2018, signed a contract with CIO allocating $178 million for the modification of the prototype with some new systems and the acquisition of the first 10 pre-series units, called B2 Centauro 2.0. The total price to build the vehicles amounts to approximately 1.5 billion euros and includes in addition to the 150 vehicles, spare parts and logistic support from the Leonardo Finmeccanica experts for the next 10 years. The delivery of the remaining 140 vehicles will be done in several installments, together with the payment until 2022. The B2 Centauro 2.0 will have several changes that will include a new Leonardo Swave radio family produced by Leonardo with network-enabled capability, the ability to connect in a single information network all the forces on the battlefield, infantry, armored fighting vehicles, aircraft and ships to improve their interoperability and command by officers, the Leonardo vehicular quad-channel type 1 used to connect armored vehicles to the Italian army's universal network is also added. It is a four-channel radio weighing about 45 kilograms, capable of replacing up to four traditional radios while at the same time ensuring less space on board the vehicle is occupied. The VQ-1 will be installed not only on the B-2, but also on board the new VTLM-2 Lince and the new updated version of the C-1 Ariete. This new radio also allows the removal of the telephone on the rear of the vehicle, used for infantry to communicate with the tank's commander, as it now connects directly with the Model L-3 Harris ANPRC-152A soldier radio waveform adopted by the Italian Army's infantry. The latest generation identification friend or foe, Leonardo M426 air-to-surface identification system, was already successfully tested in 2016 on Aeronautica Militare Italiana aircraft and will also be added to the B-2. This system will allow to respond to the inputs sent by the aircraft, identifying itself as an ally, to cancel the risk of friendly flyer in close air support missions, in which air forces and ground forces are called to intervene. New Rheinmetall Rapid Obscuring System smoke launchers have also been added. This is an environmentally friendly system that, in 0.4 seconds, makes the vehicle invisible to near-infrared radiation, intermediate infrared radiation and long infrared radiation lenses mounted on the periscopes and gunner sights of modern tanks for 15 seconds, with the ability to shoot more salvos to double, triple or even quadruple this time. With conventional optics, a single salvo can hide the vehicle for 40 seconds. It can be installed to a minimum of 5 40mm smoke grenades on each side of the vehicle for 360 degree defense. The total weight for each 5 smoke module is 10 kilograms plus 500 grams for each grenade and approximately 2 kilograms for the control panel and connection cables. The ammunition types that can be fired from the rapid obscuring system are tear gas ammunition, red phosphorus and flashbang. Probable upgrades also include Attila D and Lotha SD optics, a new position for the hit roll turret for greater firing range, replacement of the four lateral jammers with one new antenna system to inhibit remote-controlled improvised explosive devices, a new opening system for the hatches, increased driver's view, new Type B add-on kit to decrease the effectiveness of APFSDS ammunition, increased power of the lithium batteries, and finally, the addition of a manual backup system for the rotation of the ammunition cylinders in the hull. During 2019, vehicle tests were carried out to assess its mobility in any climate and to evaluate the efficiency of the onboard weapons. Before the COVID-19 emergency, the Army's program was to homologate the new vehicle by early 2020 in order to produce the first 10 pre-series vehicles by the end of the year and to sign a new contract for a new version called B2 Centauro 3.0 to be produced in 40 units. Version 3.0 will differ in 
According to Leonardo programs, an upgrade to the Lotha SD system enabling to fire Leonardo Vulcano ammunition, developed by Leonardo for the Otto Breda 127mm L54 and L64 naval guns, but which also came into use in 2019 for the self propelled Panzerhaubitze 2000 and the M109 with 155mm howitzers. These HEFSDS ammunition weigh about 20 kilograms with 2.5 kilograms of explosive and, compared to traditional ammunition of the same caliber, have a much greater range against naval and land targets and, in some versions, have a guidance system that allows precision attacks. Leonardo, after having developed a variant of the Vulcano subcaliber ammunition for the Otto Breda 7662 cannon, the same one as on the automatic, is developing this type of ammunition for the 120mm cannon of the B2 Centauro. The Esercito Italiano intends to mount the same communication systems on the B2 Centauro, the VBM Freccia, the VTLM2 Lince, and the C1 Ariete midlife upgrade. This will be done in order to speed up production, save money, and increase the commonality in parts in the four vehicles and, above all, to allow the interoperability of vehicles in the Sikona program. This program will transmit data on the position and status of the vehicle, updating in real time the situation on the battlefield and displaying on the tank commander's display a map with the positions of each allied vehicle present in the area of operations, its status and other useful data for cooperation. Other armies are interested in purchasing a certain number of Centauro II, but CIO has not disclosed which countries and the quantities of vehicles to be produced. It is certain that Spain was interested in updating its 84 Centauro B1s, and some unconfirmed sources have declared that the Ejército de Tierra is interested in buying several Centauro II. The Italian army will use these powerful vehicles to support and then replace the now worn out B1 Centauro used by the Italian Regimenti di Cavalleria, Primo Regimento Nizza Cavalleria, the Secondo Regimento Piemonte Cavalleria, the Terzo Regimento Savoia Cavalleria, the Quarto Regimento Genovo Cavalleria, the Quinto Regimento Lancieri di Novara, the Sesto Regimento Lancieri di Aosta, the Ottavo Regimento Lancieri di Montebello, and the Dicia Novesimo Regimento Cavalleggeri Guide, which have used their B1 in all the Italian army peace missions from 1992 to this day. This was all for this video. Make sure to follow and subscribe, and also check out our website. We'll be releasing new articles on the regular. You can follow us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, or Reddit. If you use Discord, there's a link to our community server in the description. And if you would like to help us continue to develop and expand, consider donating on Patreon or PayPal. All of the funds will be used to help us improve and design new articles and features for you. Until next time, keep us in your sights.